Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. My friend Jonathan Lewis, also known as Superior Welding on Instagram and on the Welding Tips and Tricks forum, uh, like me, takes in work from machine shops at his home shop. And so he's got a shaft that he's doing build up on, and that's a very common repair for a machine shop, uh, is adding weld that can be machined off to put a part back to original spec. So in this case, it's a, it's a shaft with multiple diameters on it and a keyway. And uh, part two of this will talk about welding the keyway shut because there's some unique things that go along with that. But Jonathan's in Ohio. I'm in my shop here in Georgia uh, using some scrap shaft material to get some arc shots and show some techniques and things like that. So hopefully it'll be an interesting video. Let's get into it. As you can see, it's not exactly running true. In addition to, there's a lot of wear. So one of the first things that Jonathan did was map out exactly how much weld metal there needed to be on this thing and basically came up with around an eighth of an inch, which means that you only need to put half of that down because you got to double whatever, you're, whatever layer you're putting down. So it needs an eighth of an inch, means he needs to put down about 65 thousandths or 1.6 millimeter to, to get that overall. And a little bit too much wouldn't hurt, but you don't want to go overboard and cause the machinist extra work. Now, when you're using a positioner, it's easy to start off too fast or too slow. And so an easy thing that I have found to do is just get a piece of tape, mark off little increments. I'm using the Imperial system, so I, I mark off eighth of an inch increments and try to make sure that I'm, you know, about one per second or slightly less than that. And that usually gets me right in the ballpark of where I need to be for TIG welding. Jonathan's using a Miller Diversion, very simple TIG welder, set at 150 amps with a foot pedal. He's going to also put on a big number 12 gas lens cup to try to get as good a shielding as possible. Even though it's going to be machined off, having really good shielding prevents oxidation, helps each pass flow a lot better because you're always welding on top of another pass. And if it's all gray and crapped up and oxidized, that puddle starts swimming around a little bit. It just makes things not as much fun. Now it's important, if you're going to go to the trouble of doing something on a positioner, you might as well be comfortable. So Jonathan's built a little armrest here, a little homemade prop. Highly recommend doing that if you're going to do positioner work. It's always important to get as comfortable as you can. In this case, you can prop both his torch hand and his filler wire hand and just basically camp out for a while. So now that he's got the speed set correctly, it's just a matter of, of uh, dab, dab, dab. You could actually leave the wire in the puddle, but oftentimes taking it in and out of the puddle lets you see a little bit better. See the front of the puddle, see the edge of the puddle. See, I'm using uh, the Everlast 210 EXT. Jonathan's using the Diversion. I'm using a Pyrex Furic cup, a number 12 cup. Same size cup, just a little different, so that I can extend the electrode out a lot farther and really helps in filming. trying to place those beads halfway or a little bit more than halfway over the previous bead so that there aren't any deep valleys that won't clean up when the thing's put on a lathe and the machining's done. You can pay attention to the way Jonathan's feeding the wire. There's lots of ways to feed wire. This way is just pinching it between the index finger and middle finger and then feeding it with the thumb. Now, if this feels uncomfortable to you, I just recommend getting on the, getting a piece of, of wire and sitting on the couch when you watch football or whatever, and, and that'll come to you. You'll notice also this big cup gives a lot of forgiveness on shielding the hot tip of that wire with argon, which is important. If you start taking that hot tip of the wire in and out of the argon, it'll, it'll float oxides in the puddle, and it'll, the puddle will start acting all squirrely and sluggish, and it'll be swimming around and, and uh, won't be clean and it won't be any fun. All right, it's time to let this thing cool off a little bit. It actually doesn't hurt stainless steel to speed cool it. So a little compressed air, a little distilled water on a rag, whatever, will, will help speed things up a little bit. This is another good close-up shot of that armrest stand. Lots of different ways to build one of these, but if you do have a positioner, and a lot of times, even if you don't have a positioner, but you're wanting to make, say, a, you know, a two-foot long run without stopping, uh, it really helps to have an armrest like that that you can slide your hand along and make a nice long run. 
We'll go into building one of these maybe in a future video. Trying to show lots of different angles here. Once again, bead placement, when you're having something machined off afterwards, you don't want to stack your beads too loosely. It's better to stack them, you know, over half over top of the previous bead than it is less. That way you prevent a valley. And watch the puddle swim around here. It's starting to get a little bit too hot. The puddle's starting to go from side to side. And the best thing to do if that happens is, number one, don't chase it. Just stay the course. But it's pretty, pretty much time to stop and let it cool when that starts happening. Now, when it's red hot like that, that's a definite sign that it's time to let it cool off. Depends on the procedure. Uh, I'm concerned here on this particular part, not so much metallurgically speaking, but just so that it welds good, it's best to let it cool down to probably below 250. And here you can actually look at the very edge of the bead, like on the left-hand side of the bead, and you start to see some oxides forming because it's getting a little warm. And that is pretty much a wrap, but I want you to pay attention to a few things here. These are areas that would be of concern, like they may not clean up before the dimension is, is met. And then you'd have to re-weld and re-machine, and it's better to get it the first try. Went ahead and filled those in before final machine because the part turned out just fine in the end. There's the keyway being cut, and there's the final product and ready to go back into service. That's it for the welding today. If you'll hang around for about 30 more seconds, I want to show you some special deals I've got for you for Christmas. Have a good Thanksgiving. Enjoy your families. Take care of them. See you next time. You can learn all about these deals at weldmonger.com, but the first one here is the Black Friday bundle. It's a TIG Finger, a TIG Finger XL, and the 2014 DVD set for less than what the DVD set usually costs. And then there's the bigger bundle, which is all four, last four years of DVDs, a TIG Finger and a TIG Finger XL. Marked down a lot to make room for the 2015 DVDs. So you can learn all about them at weldmonger.com.